So today, I wanna to talk about how you actually make investments in the cryptocurrency space. Coming from somebody who's been investing in crypto for the better part of a decade, I wanna give you guys some tips that I think would really help you and actually give you a structure that you can walk away from this video with and use to create an investment plan which you could then run for a while, build yourself a portfolio, and then be glad you did when the bull market kicks into full swing and we run towards new all-time highs. So I've developed a strategy for this bull market that I believe is pretty simple, but also pretty powerful. And it goes a little something like this. We need to first dollar cost average. We need to make sure that we're putting our investments into the cryptocurrency space in a dollar cost averaged manner. If we dollar cost average into the space, then we will lower our average cost basis on our investments whenever we see a drop happening on Bitcoin and on our favorite altcoins. So we want to focus on the dollar cost averaging entry side of things, and then we can also put in principled investments if we so choose. For example, if Bitcoin were to hit some of our price targets down as low as $32,000, then yes, that would be a great time to enter into a lump sum investment. Same thing on Solana. If we drop down to $58, which is one very extreme but theoretically possible price target, it would be an excellent place to enter into a trade because, or into an investment because we've got such a low entry price. Similar thing with Cardano, if we were to drop back down below 40 cents, et cetera. But we wanna focus on the dollar cost averaging. And the reason for that is because I want you to make investing a part of your daily life. At all times, for the rest of your life, I want you to be making investments. And by at all times, I mean once a week or once a month, whatever your schedule may be. Whether it goes into crypto, or whether it goes in the stock market, or whether it goes into paying off debt, or whether it goes into buying a rental property, or whether it goes into paying off your house, whatever it is, I want it to become a part of your life that you put a certain amount of your paycheck into investments or debt payment, something I call the wealth generation fund every single week and or month. Monthly budgeting, but you can break it up into weekly uh, purchases in the cryptocurrency space. There's a lot of different places you can deploy your money. You can put it into the stock market. It's at all time high. It probably will stay at all time high and continue running for uh, several years. Not a bad place. You can put it into paying off the rest of your house if you want to finally get rid of that mortgage payment. You can put it into a health savings account, an HSA. You can put it into uh, saving up for a rental property. You can put it into building a, a um, emergency fund or, and right now I think this is probably one of your best options, you can put it into the cryptocurrency space because that's where I believe there is a huge amount of investment opportunity. So we start with dollar cost averaging, but then we need a system for where we're going to put that money after we've decided how much money we're going to put in. So let's back up and let's say we've got a $10,000 a month income. Let's say you're making 150 post tax, you're making 120. You know, that's conservative. Uncle Sam likes to take a little bit more than that. But for sake of argument, let's say you're bringing home $10,000 a month. You figure out how you're doing that. You bring home 10 grand a month, you've got $5,000 a month in fixed expenses, groceries, you got a car payment that you haven't gotten rid of yet, you say you're going to, but you didn't tell anybody, it's actually a lease, everybody thinks you own it, but um, it's actually a lease, but anyway, and then you got a mortgage, and then you got a few things, adds up to five grand, you got $5,000 of discretionary, you say, hey, we're gonna enjoy 2,000 of this, we're gonna be generous with 1,000 of them, we got 2,000 bucks a month that we wanna put into wealth generation. Um, you're not paying off the lease because it's not actually your car. Um, you're not gonna pay off the house because you're paying three and an eighth on it and you wanna get rid of the debt, but you see bigger opportunity in crypto right now. And you say, all right, we got $2,000 a month. We already got an emergency fund. We got no other debt because we don't actually own that car. It's a lease. Um, and we've got $2,000 and we're gonna put it all at crypto. Okay, you probably wouldn't end up doing that. Generally, most families are gonna put some of that money towards paying off their mortgage or paying off it, et cetera. The point is here, let's just say you got $2,000 a month that you're putting into cryptocurrency. What do you do with that? Well, I recommend investing in the market um, four times a month, i.e. every Friday. Generally, that's four times a month. Sometimes it's five times a month, in which case you can either spend more that month, which you might be getting three paychecks that month if you have a two if you get paid every two weeks. Or you can do what we do, which we own our own company, so we pay ourselves once a month, so it's the same number every month, so it's super easy for accounting. So if you pay yourself, you can set it up that way. Um, so that doesn't happen. And then you just, every single Friday, you invest. Normally, that's going to be dividing the monthly allocation by four. So let's say you have $2,000 a month you're going to put into cryptocurrency. You could do one of two things. Either one, you could put $500 a week into your crypto portfolio. We'll talk about how to set that up in a second. Or you could put, let's say, $400 a week into the cryptocurrency portfolio and put $100 a week into a lump sum account that you can use to catch bottoms. Those are two different routes that you can go. You can either dollar cost average all of it or dollar cost average some of it and then put the rest of it into maybe a high yield savings account, get 5%. You can put it in USDC. That stakes for about 5% too. You might want to do that because that's a near equivalent to your cryptocurrency. It's easier to cash out of that than moving around from bank account to exchange. Um, so you can put it into USDC. Whatever you want to do, you could dollar cost average into what I call a lump sum account, which you would then use to buy dips. Whenever you see the opportunity, you're saving to be able to put money in. People say cash is king and for good reason. You need to have 
um, dry powder that you can deploy when you see opportunities. So we've kind of got the framework set out for starting from your personal finances, boiling down to how we're gonna do this weekly. Let's say we've got the $400 a month that we're gonna put into it. Great, where do we put it? Well, there's three major categories you can put your investment in cryptocurrency into. You can put it in big, big cap, medium cap, and small cap. And there's nothing particularly fancy about those terms, but it is helpful to categorize things. You know, we, we humans, the, the entire basis of science is naming and categorizing things. When we put a name on something, we categorize it. It makes it easier for our little human brains to understand because we are actually, we're, we think we're smarter than we are. So it's easier for us to understand if we put a, if we put a category on it. So you get the medium cap, excuse me, the big cap, medium cap, small cap. This is where some decisions about you and what you think is best start coming into play. Big caps I define as Bitcoin and ETH. These are the two cryptocurrencies that are set up um, as commodities. They are agreed by pretty much everybody that they are commodities. The reason that's important is because the SEC is more than likely not going to come after them for being securities. The SEC may come after Ethereum, but SEC itself has said that Ethereum is not a commodity. Gary Gensler himself flips back and forth on that, but the agency as a whole seems to be quite certain that Ethereum is a commodity. Those are the big caps. They make up over 70% of market capitalization, depending on the day, about 68 to 70% of market capitalization. So you don't really need to worry about those going anywhere. If you were to call anything in crypto blue chip, that's them, those two. I think it's absolutely essential to have an investment in them. For most people, if you don't know where to start, I would recommend putting half of your money every single week into those two cryptocurrencies. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I don't know your situation. I'm not talking to you individually. I'm making a video on YouTube that probably about 10,000 or so people are going to see. So please take this as a general recommendation and apply it as you see fit. But I'd recommend most people to start if they don't know where to start with 50% going into big counts, which is Bitcoin and ETH. If you are looking for a general recommendation as well, I would again say about 30% of about 30% of the 50% go to Bitcoin and 20% of the 50% going to Ethereum, Bitcoin being your bigger position. Partially because Bitcoin is more stable, but also partially because you're probably going to want to hold Bitcoin for longer than the duration of the bull market. The Bitcoin that we hold, we are not selling a single Satoshi of at the top of the all-time high. We're going to hold that forever. We are investing for this bull market when, when we get to the medium caps, which in this case, I generally recommend people to put 30% of the 100% into medium caps. Medium caps are anything between rank number three down to about rank number 40 or 50. These are generally coins that were here in the last bull market and you will hear some people calling them dinosaurs. Fine, if you wanna call a three-year-old project a dinosaur, go for it. In my book, Ford Motor Company is 140 years old, that's a dinosaur, but if you wanna call a three-year-old project a dinosaur, that's fine. I call it a project with a lot of adoption that yes, has already gone through its penny stock phase, but still probably will five to 10X by the end of the bull market. Examples are Chainlink, Polkadot, Cardano, Solana, many of them have their own flaws and issues, but this is emerging technology. Everything's going to have its own issues. Um, you're looking at, cryptocurrencies uh, like Uniswap, for example. We made a video recently on my top 10 altcoins that I think you should look into if you want more uh, medium cap picks. But about 30% of the overall portfolio, I would say for the beginner who is not gonna deviate from this, um, put into medium caps. Now the small caps, 20%, obviously 50, 30, 20. The, re the remaining 20% put it into small caps. These are the ones that you're hoping for 25X. These are the ones that you're saying, this is at a billion, I hope it goes to 30 billion. This is the cryptocurrency that's at 800 million, you're saying, I hope this goes to 25 billion. These are the cryptocurrencies that you're looking for more than 10X return on, and you should put a lot of money into them, but you don't have to put all of it into it, because if you put 80% into Bitcoin through down to about, about rank number 40 or 50, you're probably going to make five to 10X. If you put 400 bucks a month, uh, 400 bucks, a week let's say you put 400 bucks a month most of you guys could probably find a way to put together 400 dollars a month but 400 dollars a month that's 4800 dollars over the next year five to ten x that that's 50 to 100 grand guys that's life-changing money and listen five to ten x is a huge return in 18 months if you if you have the skills to go pick altcoins that are gonna 10 to 25 x then great do it but if you're a noob stay at the 50 30 20 split i think you'll be glad you did now for those of you that want to deviate from the 50, 30, 20 split, that's fine. Go for it. If you know what you're doing, then go for it. If some of you guys, uh, even on the stream, are like, yeah, that's a bunch of dinos. I got all these coins down here, rank number 200, and they're gonna 50X. Okay, great. If you are that good at picking all coins, go for it. There are plenty of people that can make a ton of money doing that. I'm trying to, I, what I need you guys to remember is that we've had almost 400,000 unique viewers on this channel in the last 90 days. The last I checked, it was like 386,600 unique viewers. That's enough to still fill like four or five football stadiums. So I'm trying to make sure that you guys all are getting good, sound wisdom. And if you go above and beyond that, then good for you. Like Great job. Good for you. But I want you guys to make sure that you're starting with wisdom. Lay a foundation of wisdom. 
Bible talks about if you uh, hasten to be rich, oftentimes you're going to lose everything you have. It's not to say that getting rich quickly is a bad thing. It's to say that getting rich by cutting corners is a bad thing. So if you know how to do what I just said wisely, and you know how to do even more than that, then go for it. But for those of you, which is most of you guys watching this, that this is your first bull market, maybe your second, and you've not been doing this for six or seven years, I would recommend starting with the 50, 30, 20 split, 30% into Bitcoin, 20% into E, 30% into the all, into medium caps, 20% into small caps. Do your altcoin research. Probably spend at least two or three hours researching each individual altcoin that you look into and then try and keep up with it at least once or twice a month so that you kind of know what's going on there. I'm not saying you have to be a core developer of the project to invest in it, but I am saying that you ought to at least know somewhat about what's going on and understand why it's going to be valuable, why it is valuable. And if you make investments like this, starting from a personal financial standpoint, going through the investment structure and altcoin research standpoint, and then selling at the top of the bull market, I think you can make considerable returns here in the 2024 and 2025 Bitcoin bull market. And for all of you guys that think the bull market is over because the ETFs led to a drop, let me just remind you, the last time we saw a launch of this size was the Coinbase stock launch, Bitcoin dropped 40 to 50%. Before that, we saw a launch of CME futures and Bitcoin dropped 85%. So a 20% drop this lasting like two weeks, pfft, big whoop. We're going to all-time high. Get ready for a big bull market. And go out there and bust your tail and make some money. And uh, if you got anything in your house you need to sell, for example, we downsized the company, so we're selling a bunch of different computers and all kinds of stuff. We're just like, boom, boom, here, the 475, we're selling a Mac Mini right now. So 475 bucks, here, you know where that's going? Boom, straight into that wealth management, wealth generation fund. Um, so if you got stuff to sell, sell it. If you don't need it, I mean, you know, sell things, pay off high interest debt, and then, you know, invest in crypto, and you'll make life-changing wealth. And uh, I, I know that this will work because I know that if you follow wisdom, you will find the fruit of it. Now, obviously, every investment carries a risk, but using this structure will make any investment more likely to succeed. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already, and stay tuned because we've got more content coming. And if you have not already, also make sure to sign up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy because one of the best investments that you will ever make is an investment in your education. I've been teaching people how to do a technical analysis on the cryptocurrency markets, which is basically the most fundamental type of analysis you can do on any market. It is the, the analysis of the market itself. Everything else is a type of analysis that you layer on top of technical analysis. I've been teaching people technical analysis for over six years now. So if you sign up for CT2A, you'll be joining a thriving community of 5,000 students who've been learning how to do TA for, gosh, 2,000 days? How long is six years? Um, and they've got some amazing testimonials. If you go look up Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy on YouTube, there's a bunch of Google reviews with 4.9 stars out of five. So make sure to check all that out. Stay tuned for more content. And uh, you can find the links for all of that stuff down below. Peace. Bye.